Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this video I have time warp to close to when we need to transfer uh, depending on the plot. It might be 83 days, it might be 78 days, but we're starting the burn a little bit anyway because well our stage time is very long with the ion engines so we need to do some of it. Unfortunately of course this thing takes a long time to turn if you don't turn on the RCS thrusters, which I am not. I'm trying to use the reaction wheels. That's why I've got a physical time warp right now. And also when you're this far away from the node, uh, this many orbits, the maneuver node doesn't, it, it, we can't read this delta V and have it do anything useful for us. It's not indicating anything in particular. So that makes it a little bit hard to plan ahead and make sure that we're not accidentally using too much. But, uh, well, I'll take it out of the... I was trying to turn to the node, but I think let's call it close enough on this one. And time warp with the ion engines and see what we get. Well, the maneuver node's like drifting, but then again, we're sort of closer to the program, so it's all right. It's actually coming around. I don't know where it's going, to be honest. It's probably lying anyway. So, yeah, as long as we're relatively prograde... Maybe a little bit radial, it's all right. Now oh, we're drifting off. But we're only using like maybe 20 meters per second each time. It's a 12 hour orbit though, so when you multiply it out, we'll have enough orbits. But um, yeah, so let me replot this. So every time it's back to Mechjeb, maneuver planner, and reset. And we need to make sure it's a quick transfer because our Kerbals are all going crazy already. 43% uh, stress, 15% radiation only though. So at least they're not irradiated too much. But 43% uh, stress means that they're basically going bonkers. So low delta V, create node. So that's 78 days, it creates a node like that. It does seem to be less than last time. So we're going to make a note of this. 3,627.7, okay. Um, let me see if uh, persistent rotation, dynamic, yeah, we want dynamic. Uh, and basically, once we pass apoapsis, I start burning. Okay, let's take that and see what that did for us. So last time was 3,617. And now it's 3588 in theory, if it's being honest with me. So, well, I'm going to have to do this a lot of, a lot more times. Uh, 30 meters per second each time, that means 100 times? <laughs> I mean, uh, it's doable. We have enough time, you know, 12-hour orbit, 77 days. We can do it 100 times. Yes, I can time warp during ion burns, but obviously that doesn't make this any better. If this episode takes a long time to come out, this is why, okay? Um, so this is why. Yeah, it's gonna take me some time to do this. I'll do it mostly off camera, but it's gonna be painful. Yep. But we'll plug plug on and look forward to using other engines someday. Someday. Alright. Uh, the curls don't look too crazy at least. Okay, progress report. Uh, we've got 37 days left. We've now got a two-day, 22-hour orbit. 23-hour orbit, really. Well, no, 22-hour orbit. And um, we've got 2,400 meters per second left, so we've got more than half of the delta V left to do. So it's tough. And part of the reason is because burning at apoapsis doesn't really help. You can see where our periapsis at, is at now. And we're trying to burn out of that, according to the MechJeb plot. I'm just letting MechJeb plot it. And um, obviously, we spend a lot of time in our orbit around this part, but that doesn't help a whole lot. We basically start burning over here and end burning over here, but that's a somewhat faster part of our orbit than this part up here. So a lot of the orbit, we're not actually doing a burn. We could try and circularize, but I think I'll just use more delta V. But maybe that would be wise. Um, I think I'll give it a go. We'll try this uh, orbit and see. So let's say instead of waiting, I start here and we, we use most of the orbit. We do this bit. We're still pointing at the vector, of course. And I start it. You can see it brings our orbital period down, which means it's actually bringing our whole orbit down. I don't know if it's going to help a whole lot. 
you saw a 2440-ish for the last plot. We'll see how this works out. Oh, it brought our periapsis down quite a lot. I don't know if that's helpful or not, actually. Hmm. That was more than I expected. Uh, it seemed to have done horrible, horrible things to our situation. We lost like 200... Uh, what? Okay, so... Le yeah, let's not do that. That was bad. Oh, gosh. So yeah, definitely do not bring your orbit in. I mean, it seems like Oberth effect and all that, but no, it's it's no good. Uh, then we should not. I mean, I guess if I burn prograde on this section instead of retrograde, maybe. But it takes so long to turn. I'll turn on the RCS and try and turn. But then again, I think we should probably be just like using the RCS is a huge benefit to turning, to be honest. It's not that great. So I'm going to have it turn to the node now. But uh, what we did was just push our periapsis out, which you think would be a bad thing to do. But let's replot again. Remember, it was 2,700 before. Maybe I'm completely wrong. But you can see it's 2,000, less than 2,400 now. So we really... Maybe we should keep doing that prograde thing when we hit apoapsis, which just complicates my whole deal more, but um, it seems to help, so maybe we should do that. Okay, but here we need to do the node, starting from here on. But we have to actually turn to the node. Uh, half of the problem is turning, and the fact that I don't want it to take forever to do so. Anyway, I'll come back to you with further information. Okay, update. Well, this time when I tried to raise my periapsis from apoapsis, it didn't work so well. So I guess there's sort of a sweet spot, um, which is not what it is right now, unfortunately. So yeah, unless I can plot it myself and figure out something better, but I doubt it. What it's doing is it's correcting the inclination at the same time. Maybe if I do it separately, we can get something. I'll check. But uh, yeah, looks like I messed it up again. We have enough delta v, but uh, I don't want to. I don't think we have the time to do a 3,000 meter per second burn with the ion engines. Then again, of course, having the periapsis higher up means that we have more time closer to it. That's good. But yeah, lots of problems. Okay, folks, how do I put this? Um, well, I was just merrily time warping, and then one time I decided to time warp. It decided to go, um, well, things have gone wrong. <laughs> I, yeah, I think things just drift apart. I, let's see. What does F3 say? Uh, structural linkage failed on, like, everything. And I, I wasn't recording at the time because I was doing all the, time warp cycles and it's just doesn't say uh, anybody died i guess the other pieces are probably flung out at really high velocities some other way let's see is that yeah that's that's past the speed of light speed of light yeah still got my maneuver here <laughs> uh okay this is gonna take longer uh do we see the other parts around Hold on, let me go to a tracking station. I, I don't know where... Maybe everything is destroyed. I zipped the file before starting this episode. We'll just have to go back to where I was, and this episode is going to take now much longer to finish. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah, I see 134 pieces. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. One of those has Kerbals on it. They're all going very fast. It's like, it just ripped apart. All sorts of debris. I don't know. It says suborbital trajectory. I don't know how that could be. But yeah, they're all going out really fast. Let's see. Kerbalism connection timed out to MTV2. 
how do I figure out which one has the Kerbals on? Oh, uh, the, the run with the radiation and the head thing. MTV2 ship. This one, I guess. No, there's a bunch of MTV2 ships. I thought there was a way to go to these via Kerbalism. Anyway, it hardly matters when we've got all sorts of... Yeah, because of the disaster. So, I'll restore to save and I'll try it again. On the bright side, uh, I've learned a few things about how to exit Mars with the with the vessel, so I'll probably be able to do it a little bit more efficiently given given that experience. And thanks to this disaster, yeah, that's special. Okay, folks, so I took a break. I redid a whole lot of ion engine burning, and we're in this state right now with a nine-day orbit. We still need to do 2,500 meters per second, but we'll probably have to do a lot of that when we're close to on escape. It's taking a while. I don't know how long we have to do this and probably I messed it up maybe kind of. We'll see but we have some buffer to work with hopefully. <laughs> I'm sure sounding uh, certain about this aren't I? Uh, but the problem is that you know we've got this going on here but the Mars Transfer Vehicle 1 has to come over here and it should probably start doing its burn right now. So I'm going to see about attaching a nervous stage to Mars Transfer Vehicle 1 so we can shove it off a little bit quicker. Uh, but it's going to have to boost up, which means it needs to be crewed soon. Um, I think I'm going to do one more round with this. Uh, so take another nine days. Maybe we should just point prograde right now. I don't want to, so I'm, I've been turning with the reaction wheels and this takes a long time. But SAS is better at it than Smart ASS. Smart ASS, um, you see, SAS is very certain that it wants the pitch and yaw to be in one direction. Smart ASS tends to wiggle and that's because of the attitude adjustment thing. I don't know what numbers to put in for this particular situation with the reaction wheels being so weak. So, yeah. But I've been taking my time on that. Hopefully that'll be for, for the best. But we'll do one more burn and then we'll see about Mars Transfer Vehicle 1 and I'll have to juggle the two. Okay, this may be an inadvisable bit of haste on my part, but I've decided that we are going to launch the crew to Mars Transfer Vehicle 1 and also a Nerva Tug. So we've got the Nerva stage here with hydrogen and everything. And we are going to launch that with the crew uh, to Mars Transfer Vehicle 1 and hopefully we can expedite things that way. I mean, technically there shouldn't be any problem with that, right? Then again, this is the first time I've decided to actually assign the abort action group during this series. So, yeah, hopefully we don't have to use it. But it is an unwieldy looking rocket. It's very tall and it is... Slightly higher than the mass of a Saturn V, with eight of the Sagitta boosters on it. And of course we have the entire up, uh, second stage here as well. So it's, it's going to be interesting. Anyway, uh, I'm sort of regretting not putting the shielding on the pod. Uh, we'll have to think about that when we get up there. But Okay, hopefully the staging is... Okay, well this is obviously the launch escape system. We probably don't want to decouple that right away. I already have very, very bad feelings about all this, but anyway, ignition. Forty-five engines. And launch. I don't want to ex accidentally click on anything here. Okay. We got a long list of resources now. I think after this round, we are going to move away from the ion engines. Uh, full disclosure, this was actually... This is actually being recorded many days after the last bit of this video. And it's taken me a long time to get through all this. 
So we're sending up the nervous stage to expedite matters on this bit, but we're gonna have to look for an alternative that doesn't take me quite so much time. I'm well aware at this point that this video is going to be released way later with a bigger gap than I usually have for this series. Okay, well we do have crew and everything, so we probably ought to throttle down at some point. The G-forces are otherwise going to be quite high with the eight boosters and everything. So our crew is Catdo, Catdo, Catdo. I think Catdo would be better. Catdo does not sound good. Um, a scientist, Tandler, an engineer, Hans, a pilot, and Valentina. So Valentina is the commander for the mission. Okay, and throttle down. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. And separation. And I guess we do need to throttle up here. One of those asterisks. Okay, and separation. And ignition. The stage should ignite as well. And it does. Alright, launch escape system jettison. You may note I had to do something a little bit awkward with this. I put struts because I wanted a docking port at the top of this stage so that I can be refueled later. I mean, technically the side ports can refuel it too, but this is more convenient so that it can be reused and docked to a new payload as well. And unfortunately on this adapter there's a collider somewhere around there, so I just didn't want to mess with it just in case an explosion happened. So this stage will start us off on our journey up to the target, MTV-1. Okay, and shut down. 240 by 217. We've got 1,900 meters per second left in this stage. And then it's on to the nervous stage. So let's get what we can out of it. Okay, we'll make this initial burn. It's not quite right, but we'll need a mid course adjustment. Actually, this descending node is pretty close. Maybe we can finagle something earlier. Okay, well, let's try this. Burn time in 46 minutes. Okay, activating next stage RCS, RCS on, and no, please. Yeah, this is a big lumbering sort of thing right now, that's for sure. Fortunately, uh, most of our burn is going to be done in a minute and 26 seconds, so that's not a big problem. Okay, well, it's getting late. Ignition. Yeah, oops, double clutch that throttle. Okay, and... Oh, let's not have that going on. Staging. Now we can have that going on. And the slow start of the Nerva. Oh, we're sliding back. Gosh darn it. Oh, the purple plume. And on we go. 33 minutes of burn time. <laughs> Potentially. Hopefully that'll help with pushing MTV1 out. I don't know how much it has when attached to MTV-1, less, obviously, but it's 117 tons now. Well, but that's not the dry mass, so it's probably, you know, a few hundred. I'm not looking for more than a thousand from this, to be honest, when pushing MTV-1. After we get through all the burns to get there. And... Waiting for min- oh, that's minimum. Shut down, okay. We'll have to do mid-course adjustment, of course. But, yeah, how's our power? It looks like the fact that the engine is on should keep us recharged. 
before we started the engine though we were depleting so that's why I wanted to make sure got a little bit of a correction to make here okay uh, separation one kilometers all right so in 16 minutes we do this maneuver so I hate using the hydrogen from here to do the turns though because the hydrogen gas thrusters are very inefficient compared to the Nerva. I'm tempted to activate uh, the methane oxygen thrusters up here just so that we don't waste the fuel. But we'll do that when we're trying to dock. We'll need those anyway to dock. Okay, ignition. I've waited enough time here. And while it's starting up, it can help us turn too. Yep, uh, looks like our timing was a bit off. But we'll be fine. 10 kilometers is close enough at these speeds. All right, continuing on. Now, do we go? Still a very heavy object. I don't feel like it's turning as vigorously as I want it to. Okay, whatever. We'll use the engine to help us turn. I have a bad feeling about the whole docking business, too. We'll have to be careful like we're docking the shuttle. Okay, yeah, we're a little bit late here because it took too long to turn. Okay, a lot late. There's, we might take an entire other orbit to rendezvous with it at this at this rate, we'll see. Got a lot of adjusting to do here. I thought I had put enough thrusters on. I'm not so sure anymore. Did I misconfigure some, maybe? I don't know. Okay. Well, we'll get our way closer to it somehow. Okay, this is very weird. So, I... Notice that these center line thrusters didn't seem to be doing anything. When I'm trying to kill roll, they would be very good at stopping this roll. And so I went to the tracking station and came back. And sometimes when I try and stop it, uh, this side definitely does not work. This seems to work. But let me see. They're, they should be configured the same. You can see by the ISP that it's the same ISP, which would be a heck of a coincidence if they're not configured the same. Now, we don't want to fire these because that increases the roll. I want to fire the opposite ones, but they say they're enabled, but they're not doing anything. But also, when I came back from the tracking station, they seemed active. Um, they seem to have their toggles on. So I, I don't really get what's going on here. Let me check the input lock thing. That's the only thing I've got. Um, let's clear input locks. Let's see that. Well, that's another number. No, it's not doing kill rotation. I had to activate the pods RCS just to give it a go. It's trying the best it can, but it's, you know, it can't do this sort of thing alone very easily. Okay, well, this is all very troubling. I went to the tracking station and came back, and the thrusters still don't work. I quit the game and came back, and still, uh, even though the thrusters are configured properly, and I checked that before launching, um, there are they are supposed to be 242.6. That's hydrogen gas thruster levels, uh, not hydrolocks. So, but yeah, all we've got. We've got uh, some of these thrusters work, like the ones in front here, which are also uh, 242.6. They seem to work. If I press N right now, see, they do uh, retro. So those are working, but these centerline ones are very persistently not working for some strange reason. And we have to rely on the pods RCS up there, and that's not particularly powerful or anything. Anyway, we've got a time to close approach in seven hours. We'll just wait. We're spinning around. Persistent rotation is particularly problematic in this situation. Well, 200 meters is probably as close as I want to get under the current circumstances. Um, 
It's still trying to stop it with that RCS, but not with any of this. Well, I'll leave it be and let it uh, keep trying to stop that roll. I'll go get some coffee or something. Okay, well, I've gotten it into the 200 meter range somehow, but still gonna have trouble. Obviously, I turned Mars Transit Vehicle 1 so that the docking port is facing us to make it easier. But it still has a habit of starting a residual roll. You can see it started that up now. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's very confusing. Okay, we're sort of in line like that. Let's try and... Sort this out. At least the backward facing thrusters work. Okay, here we go. And we have connection. All right. Well, that was more work than I needed it to be. Um, let's turn off the ion engines to see how much delta V we have purely on the nervous stage. 997. Well, I said I thought it'd be less than... Uh, a thousand and we are controlling from the right thing right then all right well we're leaving all that business there and well this could push us a bit of the way out but not all of the way out the transfer time is in well 41 days but we can probably we should probably start working on that sooner rather than later. I wonder if I should start off with the xenon gas first, or whether it'd be pushing too much, but by, by, by pushing all of this, it'd be pushing too much extra. Okay, so the departure node is in 42 days, but we can do, well, let's check our supplies and all that business before we do anything else. Are we really okay to go? Uh, they've got some radiation stuff going on. They're at 0% now and 0% stress. That's good. Mm, water. Well, we need to make sure that the recyclers are working. Start water recycler. Okay, that boosted up to 8 years as expected. But that's because we have buffer because I might be turning away from it every now and again. We have more than three years of lithium hydroxide. The oxygen is a little bit tight, to be honest. But um, maybe we'll capture some by boil off because we've got all the liquid oxygen on board, too. And the food, two years and 282 days. That's basically what we normally pack. So we just need to make sure that we do everything quickly. Um, 42 days. They're hanging out here for 42 days, though, is one thing I'm worried about because we didn't account for that. The assumption is that they're going to go out immediately, but they're not. Now, I need to top off the methane and oxygen up here before I get surprised by it not having that. And then I'm going to lock the fuels on the pod for now. I think it'll be all right in general as far as our supplies go. We can send extra to Mars to meet up with them if I feel like we need to do that. Okay, lock, lock. And locking these. So yeah, I think I'll do some ion engine burns first. So I'm going to shut this down. Change where we're controlling from. And get the ion engines online. Okay, well, yeah, let's turn to the node very, very, very slowly. <laughs> okay, we've done a few laps with the ion engines, but we still have a lot to do. 
have replotted and we need 2,646 of which the Nerva can deliver 1,000 and that's exhausting its ability. We don't want the Nerva to push itself out of the Earth system because we want to refuel it. So we'll be completing this with the ion engines, but we could probably do a little bit more with the ion engines first. Before we do this though, we need to turn back to MTV2 and see what's going on with that and make sure that we can do that burn because we still have a burn to do with it. So this is how it is here and we'll come back to it soon enough. Okay, actually we're still at Apoapsis. We'll take a little bit of time to get to where we can start the burn. Possibly we can start about here in 10 days. So I'll continue doing a few more laps with MTV1 and then we'll come back here and try to do what we can with this maneuver here to break orbit. Okay, well, a few more days worth of burning at this node got us about maybe 100 meters per second, but not much. It's gonna take a while, stage time 109 days. Of course, slugging around the Nerva as well right now. So anyway, we'll see. We need to turn to MTV2 and do that final burn. Well, this whole ion engine business is a real pickle. I mean, you can see our stage time is 43 days and we're trying to do a burn that's occupying not half of it, but still a lot of it. And hopefully we'll break orbit this time, otherwise we're going to be in trouble. We must break orbit on this pass. I should actually add some gimbling to the ion... well, they would hardly make a difference. <laughs> but uh, yeah, ion engines actually have a pretty wide range of turning. They turn them to maneuver the spacecraft or do differential thrust. Okay, we're still seven hours away from the maneuver node technically, but we've been doing the maneuver the whole time and it looks like we've broken orbit. We've got a Mars escape here. It's not quite in the right direction yet, which means that we're not getting down to Earth orbit level. You can see we're still high up here at Mars orbit level. We have to bring it all the way back down to here. And that's still, that's what's gonna take the next 1700 meters per second. And when you take a look at the orbits, we we're sort of have our, our, uh, our timing in the worst possible situation, right? Because we've got the longest distance between the Mars orbit and the Earth orbit to bring it down from. And we're actually doing the burn at the closest point between the two orbits. We would like that very much reversed, I believe. So, yeah, so this is actually taking more than usual, I feel. But we'll continue. Uh, our apoapsis is still a positive number in Mechjeb, so probably this is not a definitive escape yet. But by the time we finish the uh, seven hours, well, let's just see. I can time warp while burning here. And we can verify. It is sort of elliptical still when you take a look at it. But look at that orbital period go. And there we go. Definitely going out. Though so we've got sort of a slingshot effect going on here, which makes things complicated for this node. Um, well, we're still pointing at the node and still pointing prograde. That's fine. As long as the node doesn't deviate too much, we'll be okay. But it is deviating. It's definitely not straight line that a ways. Okay, we're probably gonna have to replot and figure this out. This is not the direction I wanted to be going out in. Out here, is it gonna be absolutely hor horrible? Still gonna be sort of the same thing. Well, no, it's, it's pretty bad. We've got 4,600. And we're probably gonna need it. <laughs> uh, okay, well, we do that, and then let's say we do a maneuver here. They're already going crazy, by the way. Well, that timing is off. That's 800 there. 
So it's like we don't have a whole lot to work with. Well, the longer we take, the worse off it's going to be. So we should just point at this node here and start burning right now, I think. Is that how that works? Not sure. No, we can check. We definitely don't want to arrive in 290 days. They're noggins. They're at, uh, one of them has gotten past 50% stress. Jamie Kerman. Supplies wise, we're fine. Supply wise, we could arrive in 290 days and be fine. It's their mental state that's more of a concern. Radiation's not a concern much either. They're at 17% only. Well, rather than rushing this at this point, uh, as if we've been rushing it, uh, I think I'll uh, take my time with this and I will end the episode here. We are on escape from Mars. This mission is heading back home. The question is whether it can actually reach home with the Delta V that we've got. That's, that's a whole other situation. So, uh, but I'll call it here and we'll try and continue this in the next episode. Sorry for the delay between episodes. We'll see. Hopefully uh, things will go smoother for next time. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.